Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and this is our verse by verse Bible study. Today we are beginning our study of the epistle written to Galatians. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for your holy written word. Father, your words are truth. Father, heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never ever pass away. Father, we pray you teach us your word. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your love. And Father, we pray we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray you strengthen our walk with our Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray you teach us and train us and help us to walk with you and to do great and mighty exploits for the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm so glad to uh, do this verse-by-verse -verse Bible study. It, it has been a uh, desire in my heart for some time now. And uh, we have done things like this before. Yeah, concerning the in Genesis chapter 1 and we did a little bit um, in Job and um, a little bit here and there little passages here and there but uh, this is going to be a full-fledged verse by verse Bible study we are beginning with the epistle of Galatians and um, by God's grace we will cover a lot of books in the Bible and epistles in the Bible Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Please do pray for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a new thing that I'm, we are going to do and we need a lot of help from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's begin with verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Now this is important. Now, many times when we read the epistle, uh, we don't include the Old Testament methodology, right, and the revelations and the patterns and the teachings of the Old Testament. And to many of us who are uh, Gentile believers, since we don't have a foundation in the Old Testament, um, we kind of read it like, um, you know, our standard letter which we are taught in our school, you know, from and to and then the body of the letter, right? So we kind of um, run through the beginning parts of an epistle, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, Paul is writing, who is he writing to? Okay, he's writing to Galatians, right? And uh, grace be to you and peace from God, okay, he's saying, how are you? I'm doing well, are you doing well, right? <laughs> you know, that's the mentality with which we approach the beginning of uh, most epistles. Right, but um, in every book of the Bible and epistle, the beginning part of that is very important. They kind of set the tone for the rest of the book or the epistle, and it's important that we pay attention to every word and every verse. And um, here, Paul is following a pattern that God Himself uses. If you go and look at um, the very first verse of the book of Genesis, right, God says something and uh, I think it is, it is very important to look at that. Go with me to the book of Genesis. What is the first verse? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And this is the first verse. And it is the first verse for a very specific reason. Now, first of all, it is teaching us that this heaven and the earth didn't come by itself. It didn't just evolve. and no, It was created by God. That's a very important truth. In my personal opinion, that's the most important truth in the Bible. Everything else flows from that particular verse. Right? If that verse is not true, then... <laughs> Bible is just another, uh, you know, book of codes and rules and, um, you know, maybe it will work, maybe it will not work. But because this verse is true, now the rest of the Bible gets uh, certain authority and certain power. Hallelujah. Because it's not written by man. It is written by the God who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. 
That's one of the reasons why that is the first verse. God is informing who is giving you this wisdom. Right? Hallelujah. The God who made heaven and earth is teaching us the origin of human beings, the origin of the world that we are living in, who um, who is man, why was he made, how was he before the fall, what made him fall, what is the result of the fall, where is um, God in this whole scenario, how is he involved in it. What is the role of man? What can he do about his situation now? And all those things, you know, it is coming from God Almighty. And that's why it has the authority that it carries. If it is the opinion of man, or if it is the imagination of man, or if it was a cunningly created fable, then uh, we don't need to give such importance to this book. But the reason we need to attend to this word and the reason God can command us to meditate on his word day and night is because it did not originate with man. It originated with the God who made heaven and earth, who is almighty, who has the power to create heaven and earth and who has the wisdom, knowledge and understanding to create heaven and earth. Now when he is saying something, I better pay attention if I want to have a good life. Hallelujah. So notice how God is beginning the entire Bible. He is introducing himself. Hey, I made heaven and earth. And I am telling you about the origin of man. And in a certain sense, the history of mankind. And the redemption of mankind. And the fall of mankind. And all that. Right? Hallelujah. So this is how God speaks. He first introduces himself. And then he teaches you whatever he wants to teach. Go with me to Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. Now God has brought them forth out of uh, Egypt. Right? Uh, Israel. um, God Almighty has brought Israel out of Egypt. And uh, he he has personally appeared to them. (laughs) Right? uh, Physically. Even though they couldn't see his image, they, they, they know the presence of God has descended upon Mount Sinai. They could hear his voice and he is speaking to them. And this is what he had to say and look at the way he uh, says it. God spake all these words, verse 1, saying, I am the Lord your God. Notice how he is introducing himself. And then he says, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Hallelujah. So he introduces himself. And then he gives you some specific uh, detail about himself and what he has done. Right? There God is introducing himself as the maker of heaven and earth. And then he proceeds to inform us about um, the creation of mankind and the world and the l- world which we live in. Right? And here God is introducing himself. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You had no future. You were a slave. Your life was bitter. I showed interest in you. I loved you so much that I came down to deliver you, to give you a good life. Now I am telling you, these are the commandments which you should obey. Do you see the pattern? See, this is the same pattern Paul is using. He's saying, Paul, an apostle. We will talk about the remaining part of it later. So, he is introducing himself, you know, of course he is um, mentioning his name and then his office, the office in which he stands, the apostle. It is always important to know who is speaking, who is writing, what authority do they have to write or say such things. It's very important to know that. You remember um, when... um, Hallelujah to Jesus. When Moses <laughs> went and um, met Pharaoh right, uh, with a commission from God, you remember what Pharaoh said? Let's look at that. Hallelujah. Verse 1, chapter 5, Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. And after Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. So he is telling him 
who is saying this you know because he shouldn't think that moses and aaron are saying this right although they are uh, the people chosen by god to voice god's um, will to pharaoh uh, he should know who is speaking <laughs> right so this is what they had to say thus saith the lord god of israel let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness notice and pharaoh said who is the lord that i should obey his voice to let israel go and then he said i know not the lord neither will i let israel go now he is not familiar with the god of abraham isaac and jacob he is not familiar with the maker of heaven and earth so for the next uh, <laughs> uh, you know short period in his lifetime he he got to know god and he not to go he i mean he got to know god's power god's hand and god's ability and every time when god uh, did those mighty signs and wonders he said that you may know that i am the lord you see at this point of time pharaoh is not recognizing the authority of god to command him and so god had to display his power god had to display his mighty hand so that he will understand who is speaking to him and would submit to that authority and that person right for example let's look at a couple of verses there hallelujah to jesus go with me to exodus chapter 7 look at what uh, the bible says in verses 3 and 4 and i will harden pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of egypt but pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that i may lay my hand upon egypt and bring forth my armies and my people the children of israel out of the land of egypt by great judgments and the egyptians shall know that i am the lord hallelujah every one of those judgments was a judgment not only upon the people of egypt and pharaoh but also on the gods that they worshiped every sign and wonder was related to the god whom they worshiped right they worshiped several gods and um, that those judgments proved to pharaoh and the egyptians that god is above all their gods that those judgments showed them that god is the god of gods the maker of heaven and earth hallelujah they worshiped various um, aspects of nature as gods created things as gods god showed himself as the maker of nature the maker of heaven and earth hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so all, i'm saying all this because this is the pattern of the bible this is how god works whenever he is saying something he will introduce himself and then he will say whatever he has to say <laughs> hallelujah paul is following the same methodology you remember when our lord jesus um, was um, clearing out all those tables and the money changers right and um, <laughs> they came and asked him by what authority are you doing these things see because you have to have certain amount of authority to do what you are doing they did the same thing to john okay why are you baptizing are you the christ are you the prophet who are you why are you baptizing so uh, uh john even though he came in the power and of elijah and uh, to turn the hearts of um, Uh, the children of israel back to god even though our lord jesus himself testified to that fact that um, elijah has come he he is talking about john right and uh, even though our lord jesus himself uh, bore testimony to that fact he did not say that he was elijah he just pointed out to that prophecy that speaks about him hallelujah and um they asked our lord jesus the same question okay well, why are you doing this who gave you this authority because um, the people who allowed those money changers and the, the various other businesses there was the high priest and the rulers of um, the children of israel 
So since Jesus was overriding what they had done, he had to come from an authority that is above them. Hallelujah. So these things are very important. Right? And that's why every epistle begins with that kind of an introduction. Paul begins his epistle with this introduction. Paul, an apostle. Now, apostle, how? <laughs> Because one of the accusations, you know, you, we will later uh, spend some time studying that um, there was a rebellion against Paul in, in this circle. There were some people who came from Jerusalem who were poisoning the minds of the believers and um, they were challenging the authority of Paul. And that's another reason why he is uh, emphasizing this. Hallelujah. And um, let's look at that now. Go with me to Galatians. Galatians. Chapter 1. What did uh, um, Paul had to say about this? Hallelujah to Jesus. Paul an apostle. Not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. So he is saying, my authority did not originate with man. See, I, I, I was not made an apostle by the council in Jerusalem or the council in Antioch, right? And no, men did not gather together. Men did not decide, okay, let's make Paul an apostle. And they did not ordinate me, right? And they did not put me into office. Uh, they, they didn't do this, right? Uh, my authority and my call and my, you know, office originated in the heart and mind of God the Father. And it was done by our Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is the head of the church. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. And you will see the relevance of it as we study um, this epistle in more detail. So at the very beginning, he is setting the tone for his um, message. He is introducing himself as, the, as an apostle who has the right, who has the authority to teach what he is about to teach and to say what he is about to say. And he is also emphatically saying that this authority did not originate in man. It is not for another man to question his authority because this authority came from God. See, that's how our Lord Jesus operated. He was not nominated by the, the elders in um, Jerusalem. They didn't bestow any authority upon him. The authority that our Lord Jesus functioned in came from God the Father. Time and time again, our Lord Jesus right, said, The Father sent me. The Father gave me the words. The fa I do the works of my Father. So he is pointing out to the origin of his doctrine, his power and his authority. Right? He is pointing to the Father. In essence, he is saying, I was sent by the Father. Repeatedly he says that. Hallelujah. And that's the same with the, the Apostle Paul. Many people did not think that he had that same authority because uh, he, was not the pa he was not a part of that original twelve. And he was not following Jesus when Jesus was walking on this earth. And so uh, some people were questioning his authority. But you know, our Lord Jesus appeared to Paul after the resurrection and called him to the work that he was doing. Hallelujah. Let's read that in closing. Go with me to Acts chapter 26. Here we have more light than in other places even though it is mentioned in chapter 9 and in other places in the book of Acts. Let's look at this. This has more details. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 14 onwards. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? So he understood who is speaking to him. He saw that bright light which was brighter than the sun. And, and, and he understood, okay, the person who has appeared to me has, uh, is, is way <laughs> above me. So immediately he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. 
and uh, let's read verse 16 but rise and stand upon your feet for i appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which i will appear unto thee that's important underline that in the context of what we are studying in the concerning the book of galatians and some of the statements that paul will later make and this is a this is important because paul received his teaching from the lord jesus himself all right and here we can clearly see the lord jesus appearing to him and calling him into the ministry hallelujah so he, he was not um, his uh, ministry and office did not originate with man nobody in <laughs> in the church in jerusalem uh, wanted to call paul into ministry they would have been glad if he had just died or if, if the lord jesus struck down paul like he struck down herod right they would have been happy <laughs> but uh, uh, the Lord Jesus had other things in his mind because he was a chosen vessel. He was called by God for a very specific purpose. Right? Hallelujah. If you go back with me to Acts chapter 9, look at what our Lord Jesus told um, uh, Ananias. Right? Verse 15. Go your way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, this is what Paul is uh, talking about. Okay, my call did not come from man. It did not originate in man. It was not done by man. No, the purpose originated in the heart and mind of God. And it was done by the Lord Jesus, in Jesus Christ himself. That's how I came into ministry. The same way the Lord Jesus told Peter, follow me. Or Matthew, follow me. Right? God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself appeared to me and called me into ministry. I am an apostle by the Lord Jesus Christ and of God the Father who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So that's what he's saying. Right? And um, it's important to know that, especially in the context of uh, um, this particular epistle, it's very, very important to know why Paul was uh, introducing himself the way that he introduced in the epistle written to Galatians. I'll give you a small homework. Right? Uh, go back and study. Uh, the various greetings in other epistles and you will see a marked difference in the, in the way he uh, writes that first verse. It will change from epistle to epistle, right? And here he has a very specific reason why he is beginning this epistle in this fashion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We will continue our study in the next message. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.